You'd have a hard time finding two lawmakers here in Washington farther apart on the political spectrum than Democratic Congressman Barney Frank and Republican Congressman Ron Paul. But now they are teaming up big time to call for substantial cuts in U.S. military spending. They write this in a joint article. Uh, we may not agree on what to do with the estimated $1 trillion in savings, but we do agree that uh, nothing that not, we do agree that uh, nothing uh, either of us cares deeply about will be possible if we do not begin to face this issue now. Representatives Frank and Paul are joining us together from their uh, respective states. Uh, Congressman, thanks very much for coming in. Uh, how did you guys team up uh, to call for this massive cut in U.S. military spending, uh, Congressman Paul? Well, the two of us have talked about this over the years, but actually Barney was motivated to come to me and ask me about this, about setting up a commission to do the study and set out a program, and it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's a 10-year program, and he asked me if I'd be interested in uh, doing a little bit more work. And uh, I uh, obviously agreed to do that, and I think it's a great idea because that's what I've been arguing for a long time. And I'm always looking for an opportunity to bring progressive Democrats together with uh, some conservative libertarian types because there are places where we can agree. And I think this is a very important you place to Iraq start. and Afghanistan. Now, both Ron and I oppose the war in Iraq, and it seems to me that the, the argument for us staying in Iraq solely to mediate the uh, electoral disputes among the various political parties and religious groups in Iraq has no value. But over and above Iraq and Afghanistan, you know, NATO was a wonderful accomplishment in 1949. In the years since, Western Europe has gotten strong. The military threat to Western Europe, the Soviet Union, has disappeared. We continue to subsidize the budgets of Western Europe. There is a degree of uh, interventionism in American foreign policy, the notion that we must be the superpower and we have to intervene everywhere, that Ron Paul and I both think makes no sense. We are committed to defending America's legitimate strategic interests. But we have got a military establishment that has been, and it's not their fault, it's the fault of the political leadership, projected into a worldwide situation far beyond our legitimate yeah, military. I did a speech last week, a five-minute speech on the House floor. It was called, The War That Is Not A War. And I made the point, well, it's not a war, it wasn't declared. How can it be a war we're not fighting against the government? We're fighting against a group of people that don't have, uh, they don't have planes or tanks or ships or uh, missiles or anything. It's an insurgency, and, and the insurgency is uh, all because we're over there. They don't like foreigners. We were part of their insurgency when the Russians were there and the Soviets were there. We joined Osama bin Laden, and we joined them in trying to get rid of them. At that time, they were called the Mujahideen, and now they're called the Taliban. No, it makes no sense whatsoever. It's not in the interest of our national security. Uh, even our CIA now says there's very few, if any, uh, al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. They've chased them all over to Pakistan. Where are you going to chase them to? Take over Pakistan, then Yemen, and, and then Somalia? Uh, we just don't need to be but, the world's police, but, but uh, we're digging a hole Frank, for uh, The argument is that if the U.S. pulls out 100,000 troops or whatever uh, the U.S. has right now uh, from Afghanistan, the Taliban will almost certainly take over and recreate the situation that existed before 9-11, allowing al-Qaeda to come back in and train and, and have, make their plans against the United States. I have two responses. Uh, well, first of all, you're focusing much too much on Afghanistan. And if you read our letter, we say we are talking about making reductions on a worldwide basis in wealthy nations, Marines in Japan, troops in Germany, other than Afghanistan. That's a separate but legitimate debate. My own view is that the ability that we might have had to win in Afghanistan, that I voted for originally, was dissipated when we then made a major effort in Iraq. And Ron Paul makes a very important point. If we are to be told that, well, we have to do this to keep this from being a base for terrorism, well, Sudan will be a base for terrorism, Somalia, Yemen, other countries. Frankly, if we were to withdraw the troops from Iraq and Afghanistan and spend about 2% of what we spend on those troops, in bolstering national security here at home, we would be safer. But again, when people want to stay in Afghanistan, and I think that, that it is time to withdraw, there are tens and tens of billions of dollars being spent in military scenarios that have nothing to do with Afghanistan, nothing to do with terrorism. I wish you could defeat terrorism with nuclear submarines, because then we would have beat it, because we have all the nuclear submarines. The major part of our weapon spending and our military commitment overseas has nothing right. to do with terrorism and little to do with making us safe. But very quickly, uh, Congressman Paul, why are you and maybe uh, Michael Steele, the chairman of the Republican Party, 
almost basically the only major Republican figures who are saying what you're saying, because almost all the other Republican leaders totally disagree with you. Well, who's going to define the public leadership? You know, there are several other Republicans like uh, Walter Jones and Jimmy Duncan and, and uh, uh, a few others uh, that are opposed to it, too. So there are some others. But it is, it is true, uh, a large number of Republicans. The other night in a debate, they said, oh, 66 percent of the Republicans agree with the, <laughs> with, the, uh, with the party that we have to stay there forever. Well, I mean, that means 30-some percent of the Republicans are questioning this. And, uh, of course, there's been several of us have been questioning for a long time. And I make the point that uh, this has been questioned by Republicans, this type of policy, for many, many years. I, I often make the point that George Bush ran on a non-interventionist, a humble foreign policy, no policing order on the, the year 2000. But that was before, he was that tired was of Clinton doing But that was before 9-11. Well... Well, why should a truth be uh, removed? I mean, I don't think you have to change your mind about a foreign policy. Because he's the first uh, one who says that... You can deal with terrorism. Hold on, hold on, guys. Hold on one second. I want to thank the Pentagon's uh, budget uh, for 2010, uh, almost $700 billion. In your estimation, what should it be? Oh, for this year, I would like to cut it about 50. And I want to stress, Wolf, I don't want this argument hijacked. The case that Ron Paul and I are making, along with Representative Walter Jones, a Republican, Rod Wine, the Democrat is separate to a great extent from Afghanistan. People can differ about Afghanistan. I voted to go in. I think it's, it's bogged down. But we are talking about useless expenditures, which are for geopolitical reasons that I don't think are valid, in NATO, in Japan. We had, against the Soviet Union, three ways of dropping thermonuclear weapons on them when we were at the height of this war with them. We have all three, nuclear submarines, intercontinental ballistic missiles, strategic air command. I want to be very radical and say to the Pentagon, pick two. I don't think you have to worry about the Soviet defense Union as much. spending so, is very, very important. I believe in defense. It's just that I think the intervention, as a matter of fact, undermines our, our defense, and, and that's where I find the problem. But uh, right now, uh, I, I think that uh, this is, uh, to me, you know, a modest approach, but that's where you start. Let my me, goals might be slightly different than his goals. One last point. This we'll is a modest ahead. approach that we can agree Still on. Good Congressman we, Paul, with the chairman of your party, Michael Steele, since his uh, controversial comments came up. No, no, I have not uh, spoken to him. I, w I went to his defense because I thought he blurted out the truth, and I was very pleased with it, and I wanted to encourage him. Of course, the political pressures are such that uh, uh, things have to adjust a bit. But let me tell you, there's a lot of people who agreed with what he said, and a lot of Republicans agreed. And I think the non-interventionist foreign policy under the, the stress of this economy, not only is it a necessity, uh, it, makes, it makes good common sense that we quit doing this. I think I'm going to win this argument long term. Our empire is going to end. Our troops are going to come home. I want them to come home in a more calm, deliberate fashion. But I don't want them coming home like they did in the Soviet system with a total collapse of a system. Our empire is going to end because we can't afford it. I mean, we're running up these trillions and trillions of dollars worth of debt. And when you look at the total debt, what we're talking about here, uh, what we're saving over 10-year periods, this is a modest uh, suggestion, and uh, there shouldn't be any reason why anybody should disagree with this or this. And I find tremendous support, especially with the young people who are inheriting this budget and this debt. They're sick and tired of it, and they don't want to have any part of all this foreign fighting and, and militarism that's going on. And by so, the way, if... Uh, I, I would just like it to happen a little smoother than what's going to happen if we don't and do if something. You, if you don't do what Ron Paul and I are suggesting, and again, aside from Afghanistan, in reducing the thermonuclear arsenal to destroy a non-existent Soviet Union, and letting NATO defend itself, then you're going to have to either have a degree of tax increases that could damage the economy and impinge on people, or make cuts in vital domestic programs that impinge on the quality of life. And I don't understand why we should continue to subsidize Western Europe and Japan. Leave aside Afghanistan. A uh, Congressman, uh, a good discussion.